also try to cover some uh, recent events uh, because uh, despite despite how much we try to uh, influence the world with as much Torah as possible people still have to deal with the day-to-day -day lives and today's day-to-day -to -day lives are uh, swamped with politics uh, Bezat Hashem will also try to cover a little bit of Parashat Shavuah and then Pirkei Avot uh, but to give you just a little bit of an idea in regards to this whole issue with uh, with politics I generally don't like to really talk about politics I, th I never really liked it even before Torah uh, just because um, you know in order for you to be a politician you have to be a professional liar uh, it's, the, it's, 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 it's just a reality it's not necessarily a, uh, a new insight that I created. This is what it is. Uh, you have to, if you know for you to be a successful lawyer, which we'll talk about today, uh, you have to be a professional liar. And most politicians are former lawyers. Um, lawyers and judges and so on. So, and the reason why is because you have to be able to speak out of both sides of your mouth. You have to say this and sometimes do something else. You have to do, so do something else and say something else. You always have to be politically correct. That's why they call it politically correct. It's not a, uh, a compliment to tell somebody they're politically correct. Um, so when you're politically correct, you're talking out of both sides of your mouth and you're doing things that are look appropriate but are not usually appropriate uh, or, or what's needed. And I think that even though it's definitely better for Am Yisrael not to have... Um, you know, Hillary Clinton as the president and her terrorist assistant uh, behind her, Uma, something. Um, it's definitely better not to have them. Um, but I wouldn't necessarily say, okay, this is the Mashiach is here either. You know, okay, Donald Trump seems like a nice person and uh, great that his daughter converted and. Um, but it doesn't mean anything. It means absolutely nothing. It means that at the time he made a promise that he's going to defend Israel and at the time that he made a promise that he's going to be at the side of Israel and he's going to do this, and he probably meant it. But as soon as he became the leader of America, officially Hashem took away his free choice. This we have several sources in the Torah that say this, his free choice is no longer available. Hashem will use him as a tool to do his will. If Am Yisrael does tshuva, then he'll use him to do good for Am Yisrael. If Am Yisrael does not do tshuva, then he'll, do, he'll use him to go and wake up Am Yisrael. And waking up is not usually a pleasant process. I never heard anybody enjoy waking up. No one enjoys waking up. It's the first couple of seconds are terrible. It's like, ah, I prefer to sleep. You're lazy. You want to sleep for, you want to snooze for another 10 minutes, another 10 hours, whatever you want to snooze for. No one wants to wake up in the morning. It's not a pleasant process. Once you're awake, hopefully you have a pleasant day. But in reality, wake up, waking up is not fun. Same concept with waking up to the truth. Changing your life. Realizing that you're not allowed to work on Shabbat anymore. Realizing that you can't eat at McDonald's. Realizing that you have to separate from your spouse because they're of a different faith. Realizing that you have to leave your synagogue because they're idol worshipping there. Instead of worshipping Hashem, they're worshipping some rabbi. You know, it's, it's a wake-up call. People don't like wake-up calls, but they're necessary. They're very much a necessary tool of Hashem. So I think that when people are actually putting so much, uh, celebrating so much that Donald Trump won and that uh, everything is going to be fine now, I think it's a complete delusion. It's, it's not da Torah, it's not the, uh, you know, it's not the, uh, what the mindset of, uh, of the Torah. Yes, it's definitely better than the other person as far as on, on a rational perspective, but what ends up happening from this point on it's only in the hands of Hashem. It's always been in the hands of Hashem. And obviously, since Hashem saw that mankind is unfortunately stupid and they were most likely going to make the wrong vote, Hashem had to take control. Because at least with, with Donald Trump, it's probably going to look realistic, as if it's his opinion. Whereas if Hashem wanted uh, you know, Hillary Clinton to stop being anti-Semitic, that's more, that's more unrealistic. That's more unrealistic. So, uh, I think ultimately, everyone needs to understand that 
whatever Hashem wants to happen is going to happen. When people ask me the question of where was God during the Holocaust, the answer is very simple. We made three or four lectures about it. He did it. He was there. You know, it's a, uh, there's no such thing as Hashem doing evil. He's not doing evil. It's not that He created the world to destroy it. But He created the world in order for the world to serve Him. So when people get their head around that and realize that the purpose of your life, the ultimate purpose of your life, is to do the will of Hashem, and by that you will benefit the most, by serving Him you'll benefit the most, then you realize that whatever way you're serving Him, whatever direction He's sending you, whatever obstacles and hurdles that you have to go through, that's the will of Hashem, you'll have a much easier time dealing with it. But people that say that, no, listen, I have no interest in Judaism, I have no interest in following this God of yours, I'm happy. I have my millions, I have my company, I have my kids, I have everything, I'm happy. And this we talked about yesterday a little bit, uh, about someone that's a rasha, someone that's wicked, and uh, wicked against the Shem, meaning not necessarily a mass murderer, it doesn't have to be a mass murderer, just somebody that's not keeping any of the mitzvot, not fulfilling the will of Hashem. And uh, how could it be? Somebody that's wicked and is prospering. So in last night's Mishnah, it says, never ever get to despair. Never think that just because this wicked person is in a good position right now, that Hashem is not going to punish him. Punishment will come, and it's not only in the next world. It's in this world also. The problem that most people have is that they see the outside picture. They see the illusion. They see the Facebook pictures of how he went on vacation. They see the, uh, you know, the rumors of how he just bought this other company. They see the, uh, you know, the, the news article of how somebody is giving him credit. They don't see the fact that one of his three companies just declared bankruptcy, and that was the biggest one. They don't see that one of his kids is autistic, Hashem Rachem. They don't see that his wife is really cheating on him and he doesn't know. They don't see that stuff. You don't publicize that stuff. You don't see real life. So I think that it's very, very important for everyone to understand that when Hashem wants to run the world, He's going to run the world. And there's, there's nothing you can do to get in the way. Uh, and uh, not you, not me, not Donald Trump, not anyone. The best we can do is... Come to terms with that and realize that it's for our best interest to serve Hashem the best way because we end up benefiting out of it anyway. We have to do it regardless, so might as well do it with love and enjoy it. Now obviously the more you, the closer you are with Hashem, the more enjoyable the process is. But when we're living in a world full of illusions where we think that just because we have a new le leader, a new politician, and knew this, and knew that, everything is going to be fine, and you know, people are already you know, celebrating as if the Mashiach already came, uh, it, it scares me a lot. It scares me a lot, and the reason why is because this is exactly how it was right before World War II. Right before the Holocaust. The Jewish people were at the top of Germany's ladder. They were top politicians, they were top businessmen, they were top Health. everything. Everything was great. The only, pro only thing they weren't a top in is religion. Why? Because 80% of them were intermarried and converted to Christianity and Catholicism. 80% of them in Germany. And obviously very high percentages across all of Europe. The point being is that we did everything except what God told us. So God said, okay, so... You think you have all the money, you think you have all the power, you're putting all of your eggs and all of your investments and betting it on man. And I wrote in the Torah, Aru, Aru Adam, but, uh, the cursed is the man that depends on man instead of God. And Gavat Adam Teshpileno, meaning the pride, the pride of man is what Hashem is going to use as a tool to embarrass him, to bring him down. And just like those politicians thought, you know, in Germany, thought that they were, uh, you know, they were doing good for their people by being politicians, well, Hashem made those very same politicians elect and bring uh, to power the very same 
Rasha that ended up killed, uh, killing six million of us. Yimach Shimo Hitler. So, you know, it's a. I think that the fact that so many people are depending on on uh, on government and on anything, uh, it's just a mistake, and it's very sad to me that uh, you know that people are just mamash like uh, just spending so much of their energy following it at all. I only know it from my students. You know, they tell me about, oh, did you see this, did you see this? I don't know, I don't see it, but I hear you. I hear you talking about, and you're talking about, you're talking, everybody's talking about it. So, though, listen, Bezat Hashem, everything is good. I just, uh, I just don't necessarily see it that way. I guess maybe I'm a little bit more skeptical because I also come from Wall Street and we're, you know, we were paid to be skeptical. We were paid to look for red flags. We were paid to look for bad things. You know, for something wrong with the picture, because every time you analyze a company, if you only look at it in an optimistic way, you're bound to fail. Eventually, you know, you're going to see, oh, wait a minute, by the way, this company's cooking their books, they're cheating, and you were so excited about their future and their, the prospects of their new product, you didn't realize that in the meantime, everything they have in the bank is fake, because you were so optimistic. So that's what we're paid to do. And... Um, same concept with politicians. It's no different. It's no different. No different with anything else. I've heard enough. New arrival screams echoing through the hallway to know that this ain't good. Once they pass them through the infierno, they don't come back. It's enough to make you go crazy. Do not think we fear you, spirit. We know your power is born of evil. This is your last night in the land of the living. You understand me, malevolent demon? that lived here called the Hetheringtons. And unfortunately, their daughter passed away of a heart attack inside the house. Basically, they were so devastated that they reached out to people claiming to be psychic mediums. They actually weren't psychic mediums. They opened up a total of 11 portals inside this house and invited spirits and entities from all different kinds of dimensions. Well, I think there are certain pieces of evidence that there is an afterlife. Resurrection of the dead is affirmed uh, pretty clearly uh, in the Talmud and the Midrash. To be honest with you, to give this lecture is a nightmare. If it was up to me, I would. There's going to be some graphic details. This place is a maze. The person after death went to a place called Sheol. This is by far the largest near-death experience study that has ever been conducted. People go to a place and they experience weird things. And sometimes they actually will see a character of some type. Well, where did that come from?
may describe feeling profoundly peaceful, seeing a bright, warm, welcoming light. Some people describe watching doctors and nurses working on them with incredible accuracy. Next thing I knew, I was above my body watching the operation. How long did you feel like you were gone? I went to a place of timelessness. And so what that means, it could have been a second. It could have been five minutes. I don't know. Can you imagine waking up from your sleep and not being able to move? As I'm lying there, I realize that there's a, an evil presence next to me. Do you believe that angels, demons exist? Oh my God, Strange things keep happening. Bizarre nightmares, as if I'm on fire in the woods. Whoa, what the hell is this? Man, I've got a bad chest pain. Satan's Hollow is what it's called, the portal to hell. Some people calling it an eye of fire, while others said it looked like the portal to hell opening up. And the next thing I know, I was outside of my body, looking at my body. What I'm going to do is called claromancy, the art of throwing lots or throwing bones. 2,000 years of experience passed down, recorded, of how demons work. God has them all on a leash, and he lets the leash go enough to let them tempt us because that's what makes us spiritually stronger. I'm trying to be as graphic as possible so you understand what we're talking about. It's your ticket to reality. It's your ticket to freedom. It's your ticket to immortality. Is there an afterlife? Is there a it's God? It's the type of information that can keep you away from the itself. What happens to us after we die?